All right, so we have our government's social welfare function. If you have an altruistic government, they should be optimizing the so social welfare or collective welfare of the citizens. And you can construct those social welfare functions however you want, however is relevant to the situation. But if you're thinking about um, policies that might help reduce smoking in the population, um, th those are going to be choice variables, the different policies that the government is considering, and then the objective function is whatever relevant population characteristics might relate to those two choice variables. Um, so in this case, the government is um, trying to decide between two different options, and of course the government can use some combination of these and has used some combination of these in the past, but um, some factions might emphasize one, other fa factions might emphasize another, and modeling this will help you think about uh, which one is best. So, um, public spaces B, first option is the percentage of public spaces where smoking is banned. So you could ban smoking in public parks, you could ban smoking in restaurants, you could ban smoking in airports. Um, the government can sort of fig figure out what are the most important places to ban smoking? They could ban it everywhere. So the percentage of public spaces uh, banned where smoking is banned might be one thing they choose. And then another thing they might choose, another approach to take, would be anti-smoking advertisements that the government might put on TV. They might pay for those advertisements to try to change the way the population feels about smoking. So um, here is one of our key... Oh, I didn't label this with a, with a label. Let me do that. Okay, we've got population health, which is what the government is trying to maximize, or try, it's part of what the government's trying to maximize when it um, undertakes these anti-smoking ads and anti-smoking efforts. Um, and of course, the health of the population depends on the level of smoking in the population. Oops, I forgot to label that one too. Um, and the level of smoking in the population, of course, depends on these two um, government-chosen things, the bans on smoking in public and the advertising campaigns that the government is undertaking. So, um, but then we have to think about why wouldn't, why might the government not ban smoking everywhere? Um, why isn't this 100%? Um, and why isn't the government uh, paying for infinite amount of anti-smoking ads. And I encourage you when you construct your social welfare, welfare functions not to include money. Because obviously money is just a tool. What you care about is real human benefits. And money can be an objective to get there, but, um, but it, it just doesn't work well in terms of analysis if, if you have like minus money. That, that's not a real value. It's a tool. Money is a tool. Okay, so what are the real values here? Well, um, here we might think freedom is a value. Um, some people might want to be free to smoke wherever they want, and they might feel that limits on where they can smoke is uh, impinging on their freedom. So freedom is a good thing, so it's got a plus sign in front of it, but we know that there's going to be a negative relationship between B and F, so that's going to serve as a cost um, in the cost role in our objective function. And then um, business health might also uh, business health might also suffer. Um, so what someone might argue against these bans in public spaces that if you ban smoking in all restaurants, then small business restaurants are going to suffer based on that. So business health depends on patronage in the businesses, P, which depends on the ban on the number of places where smoking is banned. And you can, of course, have smoking in half of restaurants or smoking in a small section of restaurants, but have restrictions on um, where those, where those uh, smoking portions are or how much um, space needs to be between the smoking and non-smoking sections, etc., etc. I just realized that there's an, I haven't built in a cost for the anti-smoking ads. And I could do that, but this model is already long enough, so I'm not going to do that here, but I might do that in the future. Um, obviously, if you were modeling something where anti-smoking ads was part of what the government was doing, you would need something pulling this down as well. So that's a mistake in this model, but I'm just going to proceed um, 
Because I mean, part of modeling is you put down a model, you read it and think about it, and then you figure out where did I go wrong? What do I need to adjust to make this work? And I've just figured out there's a mistake, but that makes it really fun because I have to fix it. Maybe I'll fix it at the end of this video. All right, but let's continue because we're doing principal agent modeling here. All right, so here we have the citizen's optimization problem where the citizen is trying to decide how much they smoke. So I've let this be S sub I, and of course smoking is going to be, smoking in the population is going to be uh, the summation of every individual's S sub I, so all of the S sub I's in the population. Um, and we, we can build in variance in the population into this model, and maybe let's do that in a second because it's really fun. But uh, first, let's just like structure this as a principal agent sort of model. So first of all, we have our, uh, well, let's read the model. Okay, citizen's choice about how much to smoke depends on four things that I've come up with that might be relevant here. So we've got um, C, which I, n I have not, oh yeah, I have to find it. I just haven't put an arrow near it. Okay, C is the coolness of the coolness among your friends. So maybe this relationship is positive and maybe it's negative. If you smoke more, are you cooler among your friends or are you less cool among your friends? And of course, social incentives are super strong um, and the social incentives are going to be modified perhaps by advertising. Now, some people might say that advertising has no effect on this relationship, the relationship between how cool you're perceived to be by your friends and smoking, but other people say this has a positive relationship where, um, or, or a negative relationship where the higher the advertisements, the um, less cool you are for smoking because you're sort of embedding this message in people's brains that they're really doing something bad for society or doing something bad for the group of friends or themselves, depending on the advertising campaign's message. Um, that's going to modify potentially the relationship between the amount you smoke and how cool you look among your friends. And obviously a ban in restaurants might also impact or modify this relationship between coolness among friends and smoking, where if all of your friends don't smoke and you leave the restaurant to smoke, you sort of lose out on being part of the fun with your friends by having to go outside to smoke. On the other hand, you could imagine um, this ban on smoking increasing this relationship. For example, um, if there's a ban on smoking and all of your friends are smokers, they kind of sneak out of the restaurant and have this um, moment together where everybody's uh, huddling together in the cold, having this bonding moment where they, they're smoking despite this, the ban. So that's an interesting relationship there. And um, you might imagine different populations this, this relationship is going to look different, perhaps depending on the percentage of people who smoked before the policies were implemented. Um, so that's that's one key factor in a person's decision about whether or not to smoke. Um, another might be effort to smoke, where banning smoking in public places, um, whoops, so I need to include banning smoking in, in these. So effort depends on how much you smoke and whether or not there's a ban um, on smoking in your area. And of course, let's recognize that we have the B, ban on smoking, appears exogenous. Um, in, in, in a couple of these terms. So these might be two key factors that could be influenced when the government decides to ban smoking. And um, minus the f physical satisfaction you get, uh, sorry, this should not be a minus, it should be a plus because physical satisfaction is a good thing. Plus physical satisfaction you get from smoking, I feel like I needed to include that because that is one of the main reasons why a lot of people smoke. Um, plus, I have this health factor that a person might not smoke as much because they're aware that it will eventually cause um, health problems. So H sub I, this is of course health from the citizen's perspective about um, their perception of the way smoking will affect their health down the road, so H sub I, which might be related to, to capital H or this could be distorted because people don't have perfect information about how smoking affects their health. 
and that depends on how much you smoke. But of course we have this importance weight. So beta, I often use beta as an importance weight to sort of weight how heavily does this factor weigh into someone's decision making. And if people don't really think about health, that's way far in the future, it's just not relevant, then beta might be naturally really low. Um, and of course, why do you advertise on TV? You might want to increase the salience <clears throat> of the health factors on people's decision making. So if you show um, gory pictures of people getting lung cancer and dying from lung cancer on TV in your advertising campaign, maybe that might make this health factor more salient when people are deciding how much to smoke. So A, of course, is a choice variable for the government, but exogenous in the agent's problem um, and in the citizen's problem here. So here we have the setup for our principal agent models. Let's, let's connect these because it's fun to do that. Well, you know that that A appears twice in any case. Um, so we've, we've set up the first part of our principal agent connections. Exo uh, choice variables for the principal are exogenous in the agent's problem. Now we need to solve the agent's problem to see if the solution appears anywhere in the government's optimization problem. So we have the solution to our optimization problem is the optimal amount of smoking to do for person number I as a function of uh, the, the degree of the ban on smoking in public spaces and as a function of the advertising that the government has decided to put forth on TV or elsewhere. Now, do we see this anywhere up in the principal's problem? Yes, we do. As a matter of fact, health depends on smoking and smoking is a function of the ban on smoking and advertising. So this is the S star for every single individual citizen in, in the um, country. And this S might be um, equal to like the summation. So the big S that the government cares about optimizing in terms of reducing smoking to improve health um, is just a summation of all of the S's for every individual decision. So we've got this up here, let's connect those. Um, and we've completed our principal agent modeling process, which is super fun. Um, and now I'm tempted to start some analysis here. So, well, okay, this is probably for another video, but I just wanna point out that it's really fun when you start thinking about comparing these policies to think about which ones are going to have the strongest elasticities? Because if you're someone who uh, thinks advertising campaigns are useless, you're going to argue that um, this relationship, the, the elasticity of smoking with respect to advertisement is almost zero, that it's just not gonna have an effect. And you can use the citizen's model to think through why that might be. You might come down here and say, okay, wait, the coolness you experience among your friends <clears throat> doesn't really depend on TV advertisements. Like, if this elasticity is almost zero, then probably this elasticity is almost zero, which is an argument that it's not an effective policy. Um, now, um, someone who believes uh, banning smoking in, uh, in public spaces is useless might make the same, same argument that um, the elasticity of smoking with respect to bans in public spaces is close to zero, in which case they might come down here and look for a space where they could make an argument that elasticity is close to zero. Now, of course, you can check out some of these elasticities. So for example, when we're talking about the elasticity of coolness with respect to advertisements, we might look at data on do advertisements actually work to increase usage of a product? And obviously there's evidence that they do, um, there's empirical evidence that they do, which might go one way, but you could look at other empirical evidence that says, yes, advertisements work, but not for government public health campaigns. So that would be another argument about an elasticity in these models. And really, when you're thinking about modeling, you're trying to figure out what are the important elasticities in these problems and, um, and how big of an effect will different policies have at improving the social welfare. 
And of course we know that there's going to be importance weights that people place on these too. Some people place a really heavy importance weight on freedom. Other people don't place as heavy a weight on that. Some people place a really important, uh, a really high importance weight on population health. Other people don't so much. So people obviously have different social welfare functions from each other. Um, now I guess the last thing I should say since I messed up with this model and would need to redo it, do it to add something pulling this down. When you're talking about money invested in government programs, um, I said money is not does not belong as part of the social welfare function at all. Um, but um, you could make the assumption that the government does have a fixed amount of money. That would be one simplifying assumption that would help you analyze it. So if you didn't spend the money on anti-smoking ads, what would you spend that money on? Like, what's the opportunity cost? What's the next best option? Is it education in the school system? Is it the healthcare system? Um, and then you would add a term that captured that. So you're really weighing important things like healthcare and education against um, a smoking campaign that's trying to reduce smoking in the population. So, I mean, this model you would work with that and that's part of the fun is seeing how your model evolves as your thinking goes deep into how these different players are interacting and how they're responding. That's the fun of economic analysis. So I hope you're excited to write up your own principal agent models because it's, it's just a blast.